So green building starts with a village, okay? Um, in green building, we talk about something called an eco charrette. And an eco charrette is an intense project kickoff meeting. There's facilitated brainstorming that happens. It's about whole systems integration. It's a collaboration among stakeholders. That means all the people who have anything to do with that house that's being built, from the people who are digging the foundation to the person who may be moving in someday, that somehow all of those people are represented at this eco charrette. The word charrette comes from a French word that was used in the 19th century. And it actually um, was about uh, the Beaux Arts schools in Paris at the time, where students would go and to their classes, they'd get an assignment, they'd have to go back to their apartments to work on their art assignments, and then this cart, called a charrette, would come around and pick up their finished assignments. Well, things haven't changed. The kids didn't get their projects done on time, so instead of just handing off their um, finished works to the proctor who would take them back to the school, they ended up finishing them on the way, so they would jump onto the cart, so all these people are madly trying to finish their artwork in, in this cart. And so we have adopted that term charrette in a lot, for a lot of different um, <coughs> disciplines. In um, Green Valley, we use it as an eco charrette, so it's all the people who are gathered together, working fast and furiously to try to figure out how the best way to make this work. Green building is integrated or whole building. Sustainable design is not just about features. I was really glad that I didn't hear an awful lot of what's a green building. It's, um, it's, uh, it's sustainable cabinets. It's recycled countertops. It is those things, but it's more than just a single feature. Okay, Green building is the whole package. We're going to get into that some more in a minute. Um, so integrated or whole building, it's about best practices, best building outcomes, and zero negative impact on the planet. You can't take a brown house, plunk a couple energy efficient appliances into it, and suddenly have a greenhouse. It doesn't work that way. Okay? And it's one of the reasons actually why a lot of the certifying organizations have had some struggles with remodels. Because if you have a typical home that was built, say, in 1990, that you know maybe, maybe it was Energy Star, maybe not, but now you've done some remodeling to it and you put some green features into the kitchen, say, does that make it a green remodel? if just the kitchen is done. So the reality is, in order for it to be a greenhouse, you have to start from the bottom up because it's everything that goes into the house. So um, in a residential home building project, ideally, you would have the architect, you'd have engineers, the builder, the subcontractors, the real estate agent, and even a, a potential buyer or a buyer's representative in that meeting and in those meetings to talk about what are all the things we need to consider to make this thing work as a unit. because. Um, in order to build really, really good quality construction, everything has to work together. And if you don't do that, the whole thing will fall apart. There's an organization called um, the um, Whole Building Design, um, group, Design Group, and they created something called a Whole Building Design Guide. And in that, they talk about um, whole or integrated building as being, um, as starting with integrated design. So we have an approach that comes from many different perspectives, and it's not done in isolation. Nobody works alone here. No one is an island. Um, it was really interesting in our house project, because it was a demonstration project, and we had to have it done by a certain time, we were starting to feel the crunch of the deadline. And, um, and we were pressing our super to have more than one tradesperson in the house working at a time. And you could tell that was not something they were used to doing. I mean, the, the tile guy was used to having the house all to himself. Now suddenly he had to, you know, oh, excuse me, walk around the carpet, got whatever, um, which to me was sort of a little bit of a look into the way we have approached building in the past, where everything's done in isolation. And it also occurred to me that if I were building a custom home like that, and for instance, I put in the fireplace mantle, which is beautiful. We had um, a guy who uh, does stonework and did that. I would want to know what the whole thing turned out. I wouldn't want to just know about my piece and leave. I'd be really curious to see how the whole thing finished. So um, in green building, it's, it isn't done in isolation. Everything that everyone does impacts what everybody else does. And that's really the way it should be in all building, but unfortunately it's not. It's also an integrated team process, like I said. So you have all these stakeholders participating, and it draws from a knowledge pool across the life cycle of the building. Does anybody know what life cycle means? What that would mean in, in terms of building? I guesses. From the beginning to the end. And what is the end, right? Yeah. And so, so it's not about well, we're just going to build this house and get it up and, and move on. 
what, how is this house going to live out its life? How long is the life going to be? Um, and, and we've made this investment in it now. How is it going to perform? And, and all of those kinds of things. So, um, and, and then what is the end of its life? And what happens at the end of its life? Then what? Um, so all of these things that, that we often take for granted, we just, we just don't even think about, especially if we're a builder. We just walk and build it and move on to the next one. Um, and green building just doesn't work that way. Linda is thinking, already thinking ahead to when these homes are 30 years old. Um, that's why she's done things like putting in a 30-year roof. Um, so we, we start to think more about the whole life cycle and not just what we see up front at the beginning. So in whole building design, they talk about things like it's sustainable, it's cost effective, and that means again across the life of the building, not just what it costs today, but what it's going to cost to operate that. Um, they're accessible, they're productive, they take into, um, a, the, um, into account any kind of historic um, um, sensibilities of the area. They're aesthetically pleasing, which believe it or not is really an important um, thing. They're functional, they're safe and secure. So these are all go into what a high performance building. <coughs> 